What you guys got another video here for you is Linux really for Windows users. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. And I'm going to show you basically Zorin OS and how to install it. And we're going to be talking about is Linux really for you, the Windows user, and whether you should be uh, maybe transitioning to Linux if you are on a old system. Maybe you're on an old Dell Optiplex or an old HP or a Fujitsu or one of them old systems, a Dell Vostro or whatever it is you've got that's sitting there with Windows 10 on it and you can't upgrade to Windows 11, should you jump ship when the end of life comes for Windows 10 and use Linux? That's what we're talking about here. Of course, you're going to get a lot of Linux people in the comment section below trying to convince you and saying, yes, you can, but they're not realists and they're not giving you the real uh, information that you need to hear. And that's why I'm here to give you my honest opinion. So let's assume that you're downloading, say, Zorn OS because you've read a lot about it and it is a very good operating system. Now, I like Linux uh, with what they do and uh, I'm not a hater of Linux like a lot of Linux users are a hater of Windows. But if you downloaded the ISO file, you are going to have to download a tool to burn the image onto that USB so you can install it. So we're going to use uh, Etcher. And once you've downloaded Etcher here, so you're going to download the portable version or the installer, and then you can open this up and put your USB flash drive into the computer and choose your ISO image. So is Linux for you? Let's talk about the first thing. There are a few user-friendly Linux distributions designed to be more familiar to Windows users, just like Zorin OS here. These distributions will make the transition easier from Windows to Linux. Uh, with some patience and willingness to learn, you will be able to then get this installed like I'm showing you here and be able to use it on your old system. Many Windows users find that they can comfortably use Linux after a, a few months of practice and that that's what it's all about. It's whether you want to use another operating system because it is a complete different beast compared to Windows. So I'm going to go through some of the things that I think you need to understand before you jump ship onto Linux and then you can make your decisions. So first off, so let's talk about the first thing that is going to be confusing to you, which is the number of choices of distributions to choose from for desktop environments. There is so many to choose from. You've got your Linux Mints, your Ubuntu's, You've got your Zorin OS's, you've got your Pop OS, you've got your Peppermint, and people just don't understand because they're coming from a Windows environment. They've never installed or used Linux in all their life. So all of a sudden, they're faced with all of this choice, whereas Windows, you just get Windows, uh, and that's it. You get either Windows 10 or you get Windows 11, and both are very similar to each other. Now, if you go to a big box store, you'll probably see that there's tons of Windows systems in there. They all come preloaded with Windows, and if you're going to buy a Mac, you're going to get a Mac OS system on it. You don't very rarely get a system coming preloaded with Linux. Most people have never even used Linux or even heard of Linux operating systems, and that will make the transition a super difficult and steep learning curve for that person. Another thing that you might want to know about is the hardware support. There is still lots of hardware out there that just doesn't work with Linux, and that's a big problem. It's gotten better over the years, and it's still nowhere near as good as Windows at just plugging something in, putting a driver on, and it works. And you can even get old hardware working on operating systems, and that's the difference. So people are used to that. Uh, simplicity, whereas with Linux, you might have to go in and do a bit of tinkering to get things working. And this is where it makes it difficult for the average user that's going to be going over to Linux. Now, another thing that you need to understand is most people have spent their entire life using Windows. They've been at school and they've been taught Windows and it's the industry standard. This is what it is. And most people don't even know what Linux is, uh, you know, so it's going to be difficult. It's as simple as that. You are now going on to a different operating system. If you've not used it before, 
Yes, it's got a lot easier to use Linux, but you're still going to need to go into a terminal window every so often and run a bunch of terminal commands. And if you don't know what that is, it's going to be difficult for the average user. So another one is, if Linux is so much better than Windows, why don't most people use it? That is one of the biggest questions that people always ask. And one of them is just simply lack of software. There are people who need certain software that just does not work on Linux or is not available on Linux. For instance, Adobe products, Office, and many others. Even some gamers uh, who want to play games are not compatible with Linux. Also, uh, they do not work on Linux. You may need to configure them a little bit. And with Windows, it just works. Not having programs like Microsoft Office and Adobe Suite really does matter to a lot of people. Things like LibreOffice and GIMP are just not industry standard. Yes, they're great programs, but they're just not used in a professional environment. Most people are trained on these uh, products. And again, this is why Linux will never surpass Windows, because you would have to retrain the whole of the uh, professional industry to use GIMP instead of uh, Adobe Suite. And it's just never going to happen because it's way better than what GIMP is. And then you've got poor support for 3D graphics chips and gr uh, graphics drivers that are just not supported very well. Manufacturers are unwilling to provide, you know, support for Linux. So here we have Zorin OS installed on this system here. And you can see it's come pre-bundled with LibreOffice, which is a replacement for, say, Microsoft Office because it won't work on here. And you've got a bunch of stuff on here to get you up and running. There's a browser here, and there's also some other software that's come pre-installed in here, which is going to help you, like remote software here as well. So what you're going to have to do is you're just going to have to learn to accept Linux for what it is and basically learn it and use the software that is available with Linux. It is not Windows. There is a lot of stuff on Windows that will not work on Linux. You have to get that through. Uh, your head and just basically grasp it for what it is. Now, if you're one of these people that uh, are just using YouTube, doing a bit of email and surfing the web, then Linux might be okay for you. You know, and that's that's the thing. It might be okay for you, and you might be a quick learner. But there's a lot of people, the majority of people, it's just not going to be good enough for them, and because they're so used to Windows. Another thing you're probably going to hear a lot of is it can revive old computers and boost performance. Well, a Linux user will say things like it's lightweight architecture and it runs faster than Windows 10 and Windows 11, you know, and these sorts of things. But what you have to still remember is, yes, it might uh, boost boot up times, but you still got the same old uh, PC, the same processor, the same RAM and the same old hardware. It's like putting lipstick on a pig and calling it beautiful. It's not going to make it any faster. You are not going to be able to render videos faster. It's going to still be rendering videos on that same old system. The data bus is still going to be traveling data around that computer with its limitations that it has for that 15-year-old or 10-year-old PC or however old your PC is. It doesn't really matter. It's still never going to be the fastest PC in the world. It is what it is. That hardware will have its limitations and you can't boost hardware performance by installing Linux. It's just never happened. So at the end of the day, you have to make these decisions on whether it's time to build or buy a brand new PC or you can install Linux and use it. Now, as you can see here, I'm showing you around Zorin OS. It's a usable operating system it's it is doable and you can use it as a very nice os and there's plenty of them to choose from that are very nice too a lot of people may be thinking on bashing linux here but i'm not i actually quite like linux in a sense of i can use linux and uh, the problem is i know not everyone is the same level or skill level that i am and this is the thing you've got to think about the average user or the beginner user because most people are at that level and they are just probably not going to be able to uh, transition over to something like this. Yes, it's not as hard as what people make out, but it is when this thing's going wrong and the support is not there and you're looking for help. It's not as freely available on the internet as like Windows is. You do a search and up will come 
a fix for something, again, you're going to need to dip into the terminal and learn how to use terminal because eventually you will need to go in there and do a bunch of commands. And copy and pasting commands is just not going to cut it, especially if you don't even know what those commands are doing. And this is something that you're just going to have to get used to. A lot of anti-cheats for games don't work on Linux, and there's a bunch of other stuff uh, that you're going to run into. If you're a gamer, forget about it. It's just not going to uh, work very well for you if you're an out-and-out -out gamer. So they were just some of the pitfalls that you may fall into if you are going to be jumping ship to something like uh, Linux. Zorin OS looks absolutely amazing. It really does. They've done a lovely job uh, with this operating system. All I wanted to do today is give you some uh, food for thought when the time comes to either decide to build a brand new computer or buy a brand new computer or use your old computer with something like Zorin OS. There is plenty of options available out there. If you want to see a video on some of the best options available for Windows users for Linux distributions, I'll be happy to make that video for you. And if you're going to decide to use Linux, then embrace it and uh, learn about Linux and obviously use the software that comes with Linux. Don't be one of those users that distro hop and then also end up installing VirtualBox with Windows on it so you can go into Windows whenever you need to run whatever software you need to run because that is not embracing Linux whatsoever and that is still having one foot in Windows. And before people start lighting up the comments section, this is not a do not install Linux video or hating on Linux video. This is just bringing awareness and some of the problems that you might face if you are going to make that transition to something like Zorin OS. Anyway, but that's it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server a chat. Bye for now.